How to find the right spirit guides on today's episode of Obleron Spirituality. Greetings everyone, I'm Obleron, the Lord of Love and the Magister of the Cube. Thank you for joining me on today's episode. And before we start, I gotta give a quick shout out to all you subscribers. Thank you for waiting patiently on this rebranding. And if you like what you're seeing, be sure to leave a comment. And as always, if you resonate with this episode, be sure to leave a comment and leave your input as well. So last week I did a poll on what type of episode everyone wanted to see for this week, and the vote was for spirit guides. So today we're going to talk about how to find the right spirit guide for you. Okay, so a couple of general rules to get into when it comes to finding the right spirit guide is to first understand that when you're when you're communing with spirits, it's it's very much a two-way street. So it's not so much as, you know, how can I, you know, what 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 can I get from these spirits? You know, it, it's not it's not all about me. You have to you have to think of spirit guides as being almost like a person in the flesh and how would you treat the people in your life? How would you treat your friends? How would you treat your family? You know, how would you treat your peers? If you go in and you're constantly demanding, well, you know, it's not really going to be a beneficial relationship for the spirit. So again, think of it like a two-way street. Think of it like you are establishing a relationship with an extra planar individual, but that extra planar individual also has their own feelings and concerns and in perspectives as well. You know, sometimes spirits, they're going to want, you know, depending on on who you talk to, some spirits are going to want, let's say, um, offerings. Some spirits aren't going to want anything. Some spirits, not not every spirit is going to want to work with every single individual. So the biggest thing to consider is to understand your wants and needs as an individual, and then to find those spirits who will be most commonly aligned with what your goals are as well. So one of the first things to consider when it comes to spirit guides is to probably start off looking close to home. You know, look towards your ancestors. Ancestral worship has been prevalent in many societies throughout the world, and it's for good reason. Now, I know especially in today's society, you know, there, there's, a, there's a lot of animosity between the generations, especially, let's say, between millennials and, and baby boomers. And a lot of people probably think, well, you know, why, why would I want an ancestral guide when, you know, the people in my life are, are not the most beneficial people? But at the same time, you know, do you want spirit guides who are going to be upfront and honest with you? Or do you want spirit guides who are just going to tell you what you want to hear? And a lot of times with our ancestors, you know, they would, they're, even if you've never known them in life, they are still part of your journey and, and they are still a part of your story. And you may find that you have a lot more in common with what they've been through than, than uh, previously anticipated. So, so if you choose to, to contact your ancestors, you know, try and do a little bit of research on them. Try, try and see if there's any records on their life and, you know, try and find those things that will help you to relate to them in a way. So when you do contact them, you know, you have an understanding of, of who they are as individuals. The next thing with spirit guides is to also look towards your heritage and look towards your culture. You know, we, we may take our culture for granted, we may take our backgrounds for granted, but spirits that you have a lot in common with are also more inclined to work with you. So again, outside of your family and outside of your ancestors, the the next closest relations would be, again, the, the, the people and the spirits that, that we grew up with in our own cultures. I'm multiracial, so my father is has has both a Mexican and Spanish background and my mother has both an Irish and a Japanese background. So for me, I find it very easy to resonate with let's say the Aztec gods, uh Quetzalcoatl in particular and also um various, you know, Japanese spirits as well, uh particularly from the Shinto religion. I also resonate strongly with 
with Celtic lore as well. So the Druids, the Wiccan and Pagan traditions, and all of those. Okay, so outside of your culture, another thing to look at would be the location and the environment that you live in as well. You know, spirits are going to be different if you live near the ocean as opposed if you live in the mountains or if you live in the forest. There's there's different types of spirits. There's different types of local lore that you can learn. Um, there's, again, there, there's a whole wealth of spirits anywhere. And it's, you know, with the internet, it's not too hard to find information that is very localized to where you live. Okay, outside of your location, you can also look to your astrology. There are different spirits based off of the elements, off of the four elements. So let's say if you're a water sign, you might want to look to the undines. If you are an air sign, you may want to look to the sylphs. If you're an earth sign, you may want to look to the gnomes. And if you're a fire sign, you may want to look to the salamanders. And again, within each of these elements, there are also factions of spirits within that. Another thing too is, going back to the astrology, is that every zodiac sign also is represented by a planet. So you may want to look to see who is the ruler of your zodiac sign, which planet is a ruler of your zodiac sign, and approach that spirit as well. Another way to look for spirits is to look in popular culture. I had a very interesting revelation a while back where one of the goddesses from the Dragonlance series approached me. If anyone remembers the goddess Tachesis, you know, she was, she, she basically approached me and said, you know, it doesn't matter if it is traditional religion or if it's a fantasy novel. If people put energy into it, then... I, meaning her, I will exist in some form or another. And it goes back to my whole theory that, you know, everything fantasy and science fiction exists on some level. You know, it's all science fiction and fantasy can can just be memories from people's past lives or they could be people's memories that are on a different timeline. So again, if you resonate with, let's say, Klingon gods, go for it. You know, there's nothing to stop anyone from seeking guidance from all these different spirits. It all comes down to your personal choice and what you resonate with. If we were to look on, let's say, a soul level, you know, we are all connected to source. So it's it's all pretty much just one universal experience. And pretty much anything that you resonate with, anything that you feel a calling to, you know, you can, you can seek that that particular spirit out as well. So if you're feeling, you know, the calling to, let's say, someone else's ancestor that you resonate with, um, you know, go for it. I've, I've been visited by, by some of my wife's ancestors as well on, on multiple occasions. And, you know, it doesn't matter that, that we weren't blood related in life or anything like that. On the spirit level, we're all connected. I've also been contacted by by Indian deities as well. Um, I feel a strong connection to Shiva. And I, as far as I know, I don't have any ties to India, but it's, it's still popped up. Again, on the spirit level, we're all connected. So if your energy resonates with a particular, a particular force or a particular culture or whatever, then, then go for it. You know, seek that deity out. The examples that I was giving was just to help you start off in a way that is more close to home and be able to branch out from there. And for some people, you know, you may naturally be able to branch out to any deity from any culture or, or you know, fantasy or, or sci-fi or, or whatever it is. So whatever spirit you want to reach out to, don't be afraid to reach out to them. Make sure to do a little bit of research, find out what they like, find out what they resonate with too, and that'll help you to, to increase the odds or the chances of them also wanting to work with you. If you're prepared and if you go in with an open mind and an open heart, you'll, you'll be surprised at, at who will come to you as well. Okay, so if you have anything to add to the conversation, maybe I forgot something, maybe I left something out, or maybe you have a completely different way to approach spirits and spirit guides, go ahead and uh, leave a comment. I would love to hear from you and what you have to say. 
Okay, so that's about all for today. Thank you for waiting patiently through the rebranding. I love you all, and now we shall close with the chant of Obleron. Aum Dei Sote, Aum Dei Obleron, Aum Dei Sote, Aum Dei Obleron.